out now? Yes. Okay, perfect. I came outside. There's some gentlemen working inside, so I don't want to interrupt them with our with our conversations. Okay. I, I almost saw it. it looked like snow in your background. No, you're actually at the rooftop of Dallas. Whoa, nice. Yeah. Nice. So, All right. uh, one, of the, one of the few perks of having, of having our office in this, uh, in this facility, I guess. Yeah, that's cool. Come that's it's great. a beautiful day out here, too. So, yeah. yeah. We, yeah here, um, I'll, I'll put some buildings behind it. There you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, yesterday morning, yesterday morning, 6 a.m., it was 60, 63 degrees. And how do you go wrong? You can't go wrong with that. I yeah, I mean it's 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 incre it's incredible, right? You know that in in April we 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 have we have that, but you know it was warming. nice when I was there. Yeah, it was beautiful when I was there. I mean, I got some beach time out of it. You know. Yeah, I saw I saw that. So yeah. so so, but as far as I know, you came by yourself. Who took pictures of you on Miami Beach? I got a tripod and a, and a and a camera, so I just took a screenshot from that. Oh man. Yeah, man, I'm resourceful, man. You got all the technology wrapped up. I tell you. I tell you. You know, right. I mean, okay. I feel like more people should be taking pictures of me, but that, it just never, it hasn't worked out yet. So. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so let's keep going. Yes. So, well, I'll give you a second. Looks like you're arranging some notes over there. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm playing. I'm, I'm. See, I keep trying to catch up to you with technology. Yeah. So my next two things are um, uh, an HD uh, clip-on camera, like a Logitech. Yep. Right for for this um, for this uh, for the laptop. Right. But I had, I had I had ex I had bought some some um, lenses for this also. So I was messing with them earlier. So I was just putting them away. Yeah. But the the the, the uh, Logitech C920 is a good one. Okay. Yeah. And, that's, and, uh, and I am I am trying to, um, we're probably going to do it next month, get um, a new Sony camera that records straight to MP4. Oh, nice. Yeah. 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 So that, that's, uh, that's, that's what's coming down the, the pike. All the technologies. Hey, man. I learned from the best. <laughs> I don't know where when that guy when that guy gets here, put him online too. I got talk to him. <laughs> I learn from I learn yeah. from the best. And hey, that, you know that, that um, what's the what's the 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 microphone system that you have set up in your pocket? The Zoom H1 Zoom audio recorder. Zoom, that's what I thought. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah we're doing. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to do that too. Definitely cool. makes a difference. Well, yeah, it does. Or at least get a a good uh, road shotgun mic that you can attach to your camera if you don't like to edit the audio from the video part and then a separate recording device yeah then get yourself a good shotgun mic that uh, it's a hundred percent actually i did a video for that just recently in my uh in that inner circle okay. master oh, okay group. all right yeah. yeah i haven't gotten to them but like i told you i have a i have a folder on you you know because because i do some side work for the fbi so Me i too. have a folder <laughs> I have a file on you, right, with your That's videos where, in there. Where do you th where do you think I got those dreadlocks, man? I got I got to hide stuff, you know. That's a part of my disguise. I got the you know the the, the, the Charlie Chaplin the mustache and the glasses too. Yeah, yep, <laughs> yep, for sure. For so sure. well, good. So we were we were talking a little bit about the teaching aspect, and we talked about how um, you can teach somebody who's completely not from the JKD or not from any martial art really and start them with the tr proper training progressions in Jeet Kune Do. And I agree with that hundred percent. Yes. Do you believe that the Jeet Kune Do curriculum can be standardized or not? Cause this has been a, a, a subject of question amongst many circles. Can you standardize our curriculum since it's based so much on the individual or can you not? Okay. So, so Sifu Dan is famous for saying that the Jun Fan martial arts can be standardized. Yep. But Jeet Kune Do cannot. Yes. Right. And of course, somebody is going to debate him. Um, you know, and and of course, as in most things, JKD, there's more than one way of looking at it. Right. Um, you know, Chris Kent says that he calls what he does Jeet Kune Do because from day one to day two, the name change was announced. Okay. So 
if on Monday we're calling it Jun Fan, and on Tuesday you say, okay, now we're calling it JKD, then if I'm doing the same thing, then I'm doing JKD. Right. Right. So you can look at it a, a, a number a number of ways. Mm. So can it be standardized? Should it be standardized? Here's what should be standardized. The principle of working to functionalize what you do. That's what should be standardized. The, the, the principle of approximating the reality of the situation mm. in what you do, right? So, but if, if I want to teach, if I want to teach um, efficient footwork from the get-go, right? I might go, okay, you know what? I'm going to break my own rule because my rule is that you can't teach knife or you don't use the knife until you've been around for a while. But here's what we're going to do. I got this from my senior, Paul Vunak. Right. You take a knife, I take a knife, we put a glove on, and we're going to try to smack each other in the hand. And let's go. Yep. All of a sudden, right, your feet are moving. You're, yep. you're doing footwork, you're working cardio, right? And mm -hmm. but we're not doing knife fighting. But we're, we're training timing, we're training reaction, we're training speed, we're training mobility, we're training agility. We are developing Jeet Kune Do attributes. Attributes, sure. You see? Because what are we doing? See, you know, you know when you and I talked about disguising the, re the, 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 um, the, the repetition or whatever it yep. was, right? Yeah. Well, yep. that's an aspect of that. So I want people to get, I, I want people to, I, I teach them, the, um, the static, step and slide forward, step and slide back, step and slide left, step and slide right, slide and step, and what have you. I teach them all that. Yep. And then I go, okay, now I want you to become dynamic with your footwork. So I put the knife in their hand and we knife spar. Right? Yep. I took that and as a warm up and a fun exercise, we did almost the same thing in fitness kickboxing. Okay. But we had people tap each other on the shoulder. Right. Right? And then in the second round, we had them tap each other on the inside of the leg. So it was, it was, um, it was catch um, and dodgeball, right? But from a fighting position. Right. And it got their heart pumping, it got them sweating, and it was a functional warm-up, right. even if it was fitness kickboxing. Yep, and, and I think we've talked about this to no end and probably still can keep on going, but the development of attribute is certainly more important than any particular one technique, in my opinion. Right. And, so, and, and, and I, think that's, I think people fixate on the technique aspect of things and not enough on the attribute development because you know, like, you know, they don't know how to define agility they don't know how to define you know particular attributes so you know yeah. technique at least you know if you got it right or if you got it wrong you know what's yeah. the wrong attribute well did, you know did it work or did it not work you know so yeah. you know I mean? and yeah. so that's kind of how i look at it it's interesting because and i so i've watched you teach over many moons right you and i had this conversation before um and so i always wondered like you know how do you because there's different styles of teaching i have my style you have your style but mm -hmm. essentially there's a there's a few different mindsets Speaking of uh, Sifu Paul Vunak, he's very much by osmosis. You got to feel, man. You got to get out there and just kind of do things, you know. And, like, mm -hmm. there's not a whole lot of technical work when it comes with Vu. Mm -hmm. He tells you to kind of watch him for the proficiencies and the technicalities. But for the most part, you're moving all the time. Right. And then you have other people, like, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to mention, you know, in Asanto, when he teaches a seminar, it's just this encyclopedia of information, man. You're drinking out of a fire hose. And so... I understand why he does that. Like some people are going to grab something, some people are going to grab something else. And, you know, and so that's the way it is. Then there's other people who are very technical. Hey, look, I'm going to walk you through this step by step by step. And so, you know, how do you feel about any of those? Or is, should it be a combination of all of those? Or is there a different environment for all of those? Or, you know, what's your opinion? And what's, why did you take your approach? So, so I, I am not um, 
I'm not smart enough to be able to determine, oh, so-and-so person learns hourly, so-and-so person learns visually, so right. so-and-so person is tactile or kinesthetic or whatever, kinesthetic, right? Yeah. Um, and I've heard, you know, over the years, I've heard Inasano say, well, um, if you can only explain it one way and you've got five different levels of student in your seminar, then you are the problem. They're right. not the problem. So yep. his whole thing has been to try to find, um, you know, be able to explain things to people in different ways. Sure. I, I suspect that without focusing on it, without even realizing it, I probably do all of it just instinctively, just because, as needed, huh? or is that as needed or stylistically? Probably as needed, you know, because if I see that everybody's getting it then we can move on. But if somebody's not getting it, then we can't. And let me tell you, a lot, so, so there's a saying in my class, I'll go, okay, so we're gonna do such and such, right? And then, mm -hmm. and then if it blows up in my face, I go, okay. All my experiments, all right, are not successful, okay? Because yeah. I, I let my students know, and this I got directly from Inasano, because I did ask him, once about teaching as he learned so if he was learning from Kabbalists or illustrissimo or whatever right i asked him about that and he goes that's exactly what he did as he learned it he taught it because that made him better bert richardson sure. says the same the same thing you know so yep. sometimes on the fly i will conduct an experiment in class right right and then if it works without them knowing it without them knowing sometimes it by the way. without them knowing yes right sometimes without them knowing sometimes with it um and there are some that backfire um famously it's uh there was a fitness kickboxing um thing where i wanted them to use the kick shield okay and, you know some people get scared of holding equipment plus it's fitness kickboxing they don't want to drink so in all my wisdom, this new girl, I had her hold the big kick shield and I whacked it with a single stick and she started crying, <laughs> right? That's Not because failed. she got hurt, but because she realized that there was no need for her to be afraid. Yeah. But she started crying and she got embarrassed and she never came back right so i take responsibility for losing that student right now the truth is it's partially me and partially her and the absolute truth is that she would have been better served to become courageous on the spot and come back to class that is the absolute truth but yep. I can't blame her a hundred percent. That was one of my experiments that backfired. So I don't do that anymore. Right. <laughs> uh, unless, unless you don't want to have any students, which is, you know, uh, I guess that's a, that's a personal decision. Yeah, you know? I, yeah. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't do that anymore. Yeah. So how about, uh, let's talk a little bit about some problematic uh, areas when it comes to students. Um, not people who don't get it. Those are, you know, look, everybody wants that athlete who's smart and, and they catch, you know, pick up on everything. Okay, cool. I got that part of it. Yeah. Then you have the challenging students who are like, you know, maybe, maybe they don't learn as well or maybe they're kind of timid and doing things. Fine. I can take the time for that too. I'm usually pretty patient when it comes to that. Yeah. What I lose my patience on is, um, and I really see this a lot from the folks who come from traditional arts because they want to prove something. And so you'll have a guy who just, kicks punches uh grabs traps like he does it to like basically like it's a real fight and he does it to typically a a lesser evolved student and yeah. so it's almost bullying in my opinion and so i learned from professor roy harris actually to 
at first I say something privately, then I say something publicly, and then I make them put a mouthpiece and, and gloves on, and we're going to go around, and I'm going to show them what that feels like to be in reverse. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of punish them out of it and see if they can't correct their behavior that way. Mm -hmm. What is your approach to that guy who comes in and just groin kicks everybody or eye jabs everybody or puts in that, you know, high mile an hour, you know, uh, 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 rear leg round kick, you know, or whatever, you know, you know you've, and I know you've seen it, yeah. you know. And introductory, uh, introductory program. That's why when I ran the big school, mm -hmm. you call on the phone or however it is that you got in touch with us. First step. We come in, we sit down, and we talk. Yeah. It was never, well, I shouldn't say never, but more often than not, it was sit and talk first. Not sit, introduce each other, and we go out onto the training floor. Right. We sat down and we talked for like half an hour. Yeah. And then you came back and you did the private lesson. So that afforded me the opportunity to feel out who it was that was sitting in front of me. In the private lesson, I got to feel them out physically. I could see what their energy was when they were training with somebody. Yep. And then they had to do two private, I mean, two group classes. So I already knew what to look for by the time they got into the intro class. But you didn't start that from day one. You didn't come in and be like, hey, I'm going to start this from day one, did you? Or was it some experience that led to that? Or, or did you start it from day one? I don't know. You know? Um, no. Uh, no. I think from day one, was it was, from day one, it was, in the beginning, it was come watch the class and tell me what you think afterwards and then come back 